Hey guys, for today's video, I have the new Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. So this foundation is 68 Canadian dollars or 56 US dollars and you get 25 milliliters or 0.84 ounces of product, which is actually less than the standard foundation. Um, usually most foundations you get one ounce or 30 mils. And so this one you get a bit less. The packaging is kind of cool. It's got a cool um, shape to the bottle. I've never seen anything like that before it's pretty fancy looking cap just comes off like that with a nice pump underneath this foundation has 32 shades which there's a lot of in-between shades not so much for very fair or even like less for very dark skin tones so more shades would definitely be better so before the foundation came out i was looking on the app and i was curious which shade i would be one of the foundations i use quite a bit is the nars natural radiant and i use the shade l2 so um i used that little shade finder on the sephora app and it said i would be the shade cream in the hourglass foundation so that was an exact match. But when I went in store, just to confirm, because I didn't buy it online, I bought it in store. That was way too light and way too pink for me. And um, I found that the shade Alabaster was a better match. It, it matched up way better, even just looking at the NARS one. Like it was way closer to the NARS than the cream shade was. So I don't know how trustworthy that shade finder is now that I've kind of seen it with my own eyes, but just a heads up if you're wondering what shade you would be, uh, just be careful about that. So reading through the Sephora app and the claims, it says half a pump and no primer needed. It says it's full coverage, a natural finish, um, best for oily or combination normal skin types. It didn't list dry, which my skin type can be definitely dry. It's like normal to dry, it depends on the day. So I made sure to go to bed last night and layer on my Origins overnight mask just to make sure my skin was uh, extra hydrated this morning for trying it out. It says it applies like a second skin and it has light reflecting microspheres to blur and create a soft focus finish. It also says it's waterproof, transfer proof, and sweat proof. So that's kind of an overview of the foundation without getting into too much detail. Now I'm gonna show you how it applies. So right on the box that it comes in, it says to use their Veil Mineral Primer for best results. I just have this little sample of it here. I'm gonna apply it to this side of my face just to see if it makes any difference. If you ever apply too much primer, just wipe it on your pants. It does do a nice job of kind of blurring out my skin and it doesn't feel too heavy. I do like this primer. I don't use it a ton because I don't use primers that often. Um, I usually just do a moisturizer like day to day, but it is it works really nice. So they do say half a pump is all you need. I'm just gonna apply a tiny bit to my finger and kind of dot it around where I need it and then go in with my brush to blend it out. And like, what even is half a pump? That's, my judgment is bad. That's the, that is the amount that I'm taking there. I'm just gonna dot this around. I'm gonna blend it out with my Tarte foundation brush here. This is from uh, one of their brush sets. Can't remember what it's called. So that's kind of how far half a pump got me. I mean, I'm sure my brush took a bunch of it. Um, I applied a very thin layer and patted it in mostly. I do feel like it dries down pretty quickly, so I wouldn't let this sit for too long before you start blending it in. I applied more to this side. Um, just to see if it would give me more coverage. Mm -hmm. 
So I just went over it with my damp sponge like I do every single day with all of my other foundations. And it looks like, get a little bit closer here. Um, it looks like it's kind of picked it up off my cheeks, but it's left foundation in all of my pores. So it's like a speckled kind of look. I tried going over it. I tried it yesterday too. And I did try going over it with a sponge as well, but it was a brand new beauty blender that I bought yesterday and it like picked up all the foundation off my face. So I thought it might be just the beauty blender because I haven't used an actual beauty blender in a while. So I thought it might be just the beauty blender, but this sponge did it a little bit too. Not as much as last night though, but it did kind of pick it off up my cheeks and just leave foundation in my pores. It looks messed up. I'm gonna try and put it back on my cheeks a little bit just with a brush to see if I can build up the coverage a little bit too. Because on my cheeks right now, I would say it's like medium coverage, not quite full. I'm just going to do the tiniest bit. So I would say this side is more full coverage now and now I'll just build up the other side to match, but it built up way better than I thought it would. I would say that's pretty full coverage. It's not very often that I can get my redness on my cheeks covered up that nicely. That looks not too bad. I wanna try and add a tiny bit of concealer just to see how easily products go on on top of it. I'm kind of scared about using my sponge to blend it out though. This is a concealer that I use every single day. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I have the shade Swan. Just going to try the tiniest, tiniest bit. I'm kind of scared about this. I don't wanna mess it up. That's all I'm doing. I just want to kind of cover up my dark circles a little bit more. Okay, that actually worked out really nicely. Mind you, I was being very, very, very careful. Okay, I got the concealer on. That was, uh, it did turn out really nice. I was using the sponge very, very carefully though and only putting it on the concealer. Usually I'm not so careful, um, but I was scared about the sponge picking up the foundation again. Now I'm gonna set my face with the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is the powder that I use every single day anyways. I didn't just buy it for this video. Um, it is my favorite powder, so it should turn out nicely. Usually when I use this powder um, with other foundations, it's not as matte as this. But most of my other foundations are like very dewy and glowy. So it's probably part of that. So this is pretty full coverage. In terms of the primer, just kind of looking at my cheeks, I think this one does look a little bit more smooth, but not really a huge difference. This is way more full coverage than I'm used to wearing. Even with the powder on, this foundation looks just like a skin finish. It doesn't look too matte. Definitely not dewy, but I'd say it's right in the middle there. It does look like a natural skin finish. I was kind of hesitant in the beginning there. I thought it was going to turn out bad and cling to my dry spots and everything, especially since it doesn't stay up for dry skin. In my skin, it's normally like normal to dry. I was a little bit worried, but yeah, so far so good. So I would say a sponge is not this foundation's best friend, unless maybe you used a sponge from the very beginning, but using a brush and then a sponge to kind of smooth it out didn't work so well. And that's what I do every single day. So gonna have to get used to that. So I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup and then I will check in before I wear it throughout the rest of the day. And then I'll come back and give you my thoughts. Okay, so I finished my makeup now. Um, I guess I put the foundation on about 45 minutes ago, maybe. It still looks really good. I'm gonna give you like a close up so you can see the full face kind of close up. I found that everything went on really nicely. Here's a close up of my face so you can see um, what we're working with. I'm also gonna turn uh, this ring light off. This is kind of, it's not very bright out outside, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but this is just the natural light coming into the house. I find my skin looks really airbrushed, but I mean, that could also be, I don't really wear full coverage day to day. 
Um, most of the time I wear light to medium coverage and my redness and my freckles are always showing. Um, so this is like a big step up for me. Just looking at my skin, you can barely see my freckles at all. Now that I have it on and like looking at the amount of coverage I have, it doesn't feel heavy at all. Like when I think of full coverage foundation, it just makes me want to wash my face. I usually just don't go for that, but this is not bad. Like it just feels like normal lightweight makeup. It's good. I did try this foundation out last night. Um, so I already had an idea of what I was getting myself into before I filmed this today. I didn't really wear it for a long time though. So I have no idea um, how it lasts throughout the day. I just kind of played around with the application and seeing how it looked on my skin. I'm pretty happy with how it looks, especially I was worried because on the Sephora app, I mean, a lot of foundations list just all skin types for foundations and this one didn't list dry skin. So I was like, oh, it must, must really be bad for dry skin, but I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, I have only been wearing it for 45 minutes to maybe an hour. So I can't really say much yet to how it wears on dry skin, but I mean, just with the application, it looks really good. So I'm gonna go about my day for a while. I'm gonna wear it for a few hours and I will check back in and let you know how it's So this is my three hour check-in. Um, it's still holding up really well. It's not flaking off anywhere. The coverage is still there. Um, I mean, it's only been three hours, but so far so good. Like it says, it is also not uh, transferring. Um, I find with my NARS one sometimes, if I want to build up the coverage, then I kind of suffer in that um, it'll transfer onto clothing or the phone or my like just from touching my face, it'll go onto my hands. But this one is, um, it's not coming off, not at all. I think you'd be see able to see it best on my nails. Staying in place. That's what I like. I think this is the best my skin has looked in a true full coverage foundation. I mean, it's only been three hours, but um, it's been a good three hours. So we will check in again later. So I am going to do my final check in here again, just because it's good natural lighting instead of the ring light. Um, you'll be able to see better how it's worn. It pretty much looks the same as when I just applied it. Um, it has come off around my nose though. Um, in like this area and same on the other side. It's been going off around there and I've been trying really hard not to touch my nose because I always touch my nose and it always comes off around my nose, uh, but it's still managed to even with me consciously not doing that. So that's kind of a bummer, but the rest of my face still looks really good. It looks like pretty much just when I applied it. It has gotten glowier throughout the day, which I do like. It went from more of like the skin-like finish to just a subtle little kind of glow. It's pretty nice. So this will be my final close-up. I would say pretty good. Okay, finally, I just want to revisit the claims and kind of summarize my thoughts. So, so the whole half a pump and no primer needed thing. I think you could get away with half a pump. It wouldn't be very full coverage though. It would be just a thinly spread out layer. It can be done though, I think. But I think if you're using a brush and you are gonna want the full coverage, then you're probably gonna want more than half a pump. And it says no primer needed. I mean, do you really need a primer with any foundation? It's up to you. This is full coverage. Yes, 100% agree. Natural finish. Yes, 100% agree. Uh, my skin looks great. It looks like skin and it looks airbrushed and just, it's honestly kind of like the perfect full coverage foundation. It says waterproof, transfer proof, and sweat proof. Um, I didn't exactly test it if it was waterproof. I didn't exactly work up a sweat today, but I can confirm transfer proof, definitely. The only thing that I do not like about this foundation is that when I went over it with a sponge, it was two different sponges on two different times. It like took off product uh, quite a bit instead of just smoothing it out. Every day I use my sponge and I just smooth out some lines and it's fine. It never removes any product. But for this foundation, it just comes off so easily. 
So that's the only thing that I would be careful with. I also don't think that it dries darker or gets darker throughout the day. So the shade seems to be pretty true to what it is. Once it's applied, uh, it pretty much just stays that way. So with everything that I've said today, I kind of love this foundation. It's not one that I probably will wear every day because I don't really go for full coverage every day, which this is. I mean, it can be sheared out, yeah, but um, I think I would wear this more for like special occasions and um, that kind of thing. But most of the time, I like more of a glow and like less coverage. But this is a really nice full coverage foundation for dry skin. And I don't know why it says it's not for dry skin on Sephora because I think it works great. So for me personally, I think this foundation is totally worth it and I'm gonna continue to use it. So that's all I have for today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye.